Welcome back to the Elliott, and for those of you that are new, welcome aboard. One of the biggest challenges that we have on a boat when we're on the hook or if you're in an RV and you're boondocking, well, you have limited power. Your battery bank only has so much depth. And it's awesome having internet with Starlink, but let's be honest, the downside is this bad boy drains your power. So Starlink has come up with a new feature that we're gonna talk about today that's gonna solve that for us, or at least make it a little less painful. In 2019, we sold everything to realize our dream of living, working, and cruising full-time on our boat. I'm John, this is Carlin, and this is our home, the Elliott. All right, so what we're gonna talk about today is power. To begin with, we're gonna speak in watts. We're not gonna talk about amperage. And the reason is, is because it, it's a great common denominator no matter if you have a 12 volt, 24 volt, or 48 volt system for those of you that have off-grid homes. The thing about wattage, so let's say we have a 120 watt load. If you divide that by 12 volts for your 12 volt bank, that means you're drawing 10 amps. Pretty easy. If you have a 24 volt bank uh, and you're drawing 120 watts, that means you're drawing five amps. And if you have a 48 volt bank, guess what? You're drawing 2.5 amps. So we're not gonna talk about amps. A lot of people do that, but it just confuses the whole thing. We're just gonna talk about watts today. Let's start with the standard RV dish. That bad boy at idle draws about 50 watts. Uh, on average, it draws about 60 watts, and when it's really uh, downloading or you know doing heavy uploads, you're drawing about 80 watts. Now, if you take the larger in-motion, high-performance dish, it's about twice the size. So guess what? It draws about twice the wattage. So honestly, you're looking at the lowest, uh, 100 watts uh, on your average. You're looking at about 120 watts, and when that thing's really drawing, it, it, it's about 180 watts. It's a real deal. Now, if you have a bank that has, you know, 1,200 watts, let's just go with that, uh, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out in about 10 hours you're going to flatten your bank. Well, that's not really workable for most of us. So Starlink has been listening to the forums, which, by the way, if you're not on it, I'd recommend getting on to the Starlink on Boats forum on Facebook. Uh, I'm not a big Facebook guy, but I'll tell you what, there's a ton of information where everybody's been sharing info about you know, crossing the Pacific and Atlantic and different areas. And so if, if you're wondering, are you getting coverage in different areas uh, because it's hard to find out where, where that coverage is because Mal Starlink's not very good at publishing those types of things, you can get some real firsthand feedback from people that are on that forum and ask a bunch of questions. Because uh, we tend to get a lot of questions on our videos. It's probably one of the best places to go do that. Uh, and, and uh, do a search or ask a question on those forums. That being said, Starlink, like I said, has been looking at those forums and seeing people's feedback about, gosh, you know, the Starlink's flattening my, my batteries at the end of the night, I have to turn it off, I have to turn it back on, uh, a little bit of a pain. So what they've come up with, with the latest release in their software. So if I just go into my Starlink app, and I'm just gonna open that up, and you'll see my dish there. And we have the high performance dish that we're showing you, the in motion. That's why it's a little bit bigger and it doesn't have the pole showing there. Uh, but underneath settings, so we'll just click on that. Uh, it has the, the setting for your snow melt. We have ours on automatic because we, we do get some snow up here in the Pacific Northwest. But there's this new cool feature if you scroll down and it's called sleep schedule. Okay, and what the sleep schedule does and so I'm not gonna wing it, I'll read it out loud. It conserves power by scheduling your Starlink to sleep. Starlink won't provide internet or snow melt while sleeping. Now they go on to tell you that it's gonna take a while to do snow melt if you put this thing to sleep and there's a bunch of snow that lands on it, but you know, everything's a trade off in life. What's more important is if you look at this feature and you toggle it on and say enable sleep schedule, you can actually just, there's a little clock here and you can just drag uh, the time frame, we're going to drag ours to be 11 o'clock at night to 6 a.m. We're going to put our Starlink to sleep so it's not having a battery draw off of our bank at that time. And then you just say save, and guess what? It'll put that bad boy to sleep, and you, know, you don't have to worry about uh, shutting it down or turning it back on. It's a pretty cool feature that I think is going to come in really handy for all of us that 
or anchored out and or boondocking. Uh, so thank you, Sterling. And if these videos are valuable to you, we'll continue to publish these new updates to help you out uh, in these common situations that we live as well. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace.